Welcome dear primary four students. I am Mrs. Duai. Today we will continue our learn lessons of concept two, senses at work. We learned in our previous lessons that the main job of the living organism's senses is to gather information from surrounding to help the living organism adapt. The senses also send signals to the nervous system that are interpreted by the brain so that the body feels the stimulus received by the senses and makes the appropriate response. اتعلمنا في الدروس اللي فاتت ازاي الجهاز العصبي بيقدر ان هو يستقبل الستيمولس اللي هي المحفزات سواء انه شاف حاجة او شم ريحة معينة وبعدين بنبتدي نترجم المعلومة ونبتدي نعمل لها response. We also gathered evidence that those senses must work together with the various body parts especially the nervous system and that the nervous system must also work in integration with all those body parts and systems. I wonder how this could happen. How can the different parts of the body work together as one system? Let's find an answer to this question right now. Get your writing tools and books. Be ready to start our third lesson of concept two, senses at work. Have you ever seen this creature before? Did you see it? It is the Egyptian Jerboa. I bet you heard about it or seen it before. The Egyptian Jerboa is a small rodent that lives in the Egyptian desert. نوع من أنواع الفئران جربوة هو فأر اليربوع وبيعيش في صحراء مصر. Let's now evaluate like scientists and gather evidence in the activity number eight to explain how this Jerboa adapts and survives in its environment. How specifically its specialized sensory organs and nervous system work together to help it survive? Open your book on page 49. Look at the Jerboa's image carefully and gather evidence about the physical traits that might make it well adapted to survival in the extreme conditions of the desert. Focus on identifying the right traits that really help the Jerboa adapt and survive in the desert. That's how we will apply and develop our evaluation skills as scientists do. What did you notice? قبل ما نبتدي نقرا مع بعض عايزاكم تركزوا جدا انكم تطبقوا المعلومات اللي درسناها قبل كده. أول حاجة تلاحظوا الانفايرمنت اللي الانيمال ده عايش فيها وبعدين تبتدوا تفكروا في ايه المشاكل اللي بتواجهه سواء هوت ويذر او كولد ويذر بعد كده نبتدي نفكر في الستراكشرال ادابتيشنز اللي هتبقى عنده and how it works. What did you notice? How is the size of the Jerboa's body? Is it big or small? Exactly, it's small. Does it have hair like Phoenix Fox or feather like the penguin? I can see it has hair and also has big ears, short front lips, and long hind legs. What about the tail? It's long tail. Let's return back to page 49 and 50 to read the text called The Jumping Jerboa. Remember to write down your notes while reading the gather evidence about the Jerboa's body parts that help it survive in its environment. And also about which sense the Jerboa relies upon most to help it sense danger. In case you are in your classroom, pair up with a, with a reading partner and start reading together. I'm sure you have gathered a lot of evidence from the text like me. Let's share the most important notes. Humans and animals rely on their senses to find food. Fantastic! That's what we learned in lesson one, how the senses are important for animals, particularly in helping them find food, such as smelling it. That's why having strong sensory and adaptation abilities in the organism's body help it to survive. Two of the Jerboa's physical adaptation forms 
are its legs that help it jump and hop three meters long and its hairy feet that grip the sand since the jerboa lives in the desert. Those forms are helpful as jumping would be faster than running on the sand with the jerboa's legs not getting stuck in the sand. تاني نلاحظ المعلومة دي عشان مهمة جدا. Jerboa's body is covered with hair. جسمه متغطي بالشعر. كمان رجلي الخلفية طويلة. دي بتساعده على القفز. وبالنسبة له طبعا في الصحراء أسهل بكتير إنه يقفز for three, three meters من إنه يبتدي يجري جري عادي. Also having hair on his feet would protect it from slipping on the sand when it jumps. الهير اللي بيبقى موجود على رجليه بيساعده ان هو ما يتزحلقش while running on the sand. The jerboa uses its very big ears to listen to predators and escape danger. It truly has a sharp sense of hearing due to its big ears. فاكرين احنا سمعنا المعلومة دي قبل كده فين؟ في الفينيك فوكس. And also depends on other strong senses than sights such as the sense of hearing. And that's because it's a Nocturnal animal, which means it's active at night in the dark surrounding where eyesight is really hard. The jerboa's sense of hearing is considered the most dependent sense that helps stay alert and escape danger. Have you ever wondered what happens inside the jerboa's body to sense and escape danger? خلاص احنا عرفنا ان الجربوز ايرز هتساعده ان هو يهرب بسهولة لان عنده دقة عالية جدا في السمع طب ايه اللي بيحصل جوه جسمه عشان يقدر يسمع ويبتدي يترجم المعلومة دي This is a good question I'll give you a few seconds to think about it First, the jerboa's ears receive sound then send the sound in the form of signals through the nerves in the jerboa's body from the ears to the spinal cord and then to the brain. Second, the brain. The brain translates the message that it has received from the ear and alert another body organs to get ready to escape. Can you guess what is this organ? Amazing, it is the jerboa's leg, which start jumping and hopping in zigzag patterns. Arfina zigzag patterns? Yani in different directions. So, all the jerboa's body parts must work together to help the jerboa respond successfully to stimuli and adapt to its environmental condition. Hmm. I wonder how does the jerboa's physical response to danger compare to that of a human? Open page 51 to think about the answer of this question. You might have thought that jerboas and humans are exposed to different stimuli due to the different environment they live in. تاني بفكركم يعني ايه stimuli؟ يعني محفزات وطبيعي ان اكيد اللي بيحصل لي غير اللي بيحصل للجربوة. However, their bodies respond to those stimuli probably in a similar way. But how? One of my students thought that both jerboas and humans similarly used their senses to send a signal to the brain through the nerves to alert them to move. But what is the difference now? The difference is in the kind of movement that both do. Humans do not do the same behavior as jerboa, but they can only move away from the source of danger. أكيد لاحظتوا إن إحنا الاثنين بنستقبل الاستيميولاي بنبعت المسج في النيرف تو ذا برين والبرين هيدي اوردر ان احنا نتحرك دي سيميلاريتي ما بيننا طب ايه الاختلاف؟ الاختلاف في طريقه الحركه اكيد احنا مش بنتحرك زي الجربوه وي ويل موف اواي لايك ووكينج اور رانينج لكن الجربوه از موفينج باي جامبينج اند هوبينج اند ناو افتر جاذرينج اول ذا ايفيدنس جيت باك تو بيج 51 اند يوز ذيس ثري جيفن بوكسز تو سكتش هاو ذا جربوه ريسبوند تو دينجر from the time it hears the predator's sound until it escapes danger. Remember to share your sketches with your partners in case you are in your class. You may also share your sketches with us on our Facebook page by using the link that appears on the screen by scanning the QR code of our form. Take a picture of your sketch after you draw it in your book and then upload it to the form by using the QR code. We will nominate the best sketches and share them with all primary four students. Read the question carefully 
and start drawing. My students' sketches were so creative. Some of my students drew the Jirbuwa's large ears, as the Jirbuwa depends mainly on the sense of hearing. That helps it adapt to the environment. Then they drew the Jirbuwa's brain, as it processes the signals and interprets the information received from the ears. Finally, they drew the Jirbuwa's legs, that received an order from the nervous system to react quickly and avoid danger. This definitely makes us wonder, will the Jirbuwa's ear sensory responses be fast enough to help it perceive and react quickly to danger? That's a good question. The interactive activity 9 observed like a scientist called nerves. This activity will help us find an answer. We need to gather evidence about the main organ that coordinates our responses to sensory information through the nervous system and control our reaction time. Can you guess what is it? Amazing! It's the brain. Let's carry out an investigation on our tick books about the brain role in responding to sensory information. For example, Let's think about how our bodies respond when they touch something hot. Exactly, we move our hands away. But why do we move our hands so quickly, unlike other situations? So, now we will respond to a group of sounds and visual stimuli like seeing a plant and hearing a cat. Two, record our reaction time to each stimulus that is coordinated by our brain in a data table. And three, respond to some questions in writing. Let's play our interactive game. أول حاجة هنلاحظ الأصوات اللي هتحصل ولازم نعمل ريسبونس يعني إحنا اللي هندي رد الفعل في اللعبة وبعدين نلاحظ أخذنا وقت قد إيه ونبتدي نفكر which organ help us to do this. تعديتوا عشان تلعبوا؟ يلا بينا نلعب Here's how the test works First we are going to choose the type of stimulus sound or visual then we press go after that when we hear the sound we will press record Okay? I'll choose sound Sound of bells, go. Again, when I do, when I hear the sound, I'll press. We have more than one trial. I think this is the last trial. We still have one more. Perfect. Here is a table for the time that we take to respond to this stimulus. طبعا احنا اتفقنا ان stimulus هي المحفزات سواء انا شفت حاجة او سمعت حاجة. Okay. Let's go back to our table. Are you ready to try this out and record your observations in this table? Let's think about the first question. How do nerves function when you see something? When we see something, nerves carry impulses from the eye to the spinal cord and to the brain to process them. The second question, things that affect our reaction time to sight and sound. There are many things that can affect our reaction time, such as the volume of the sound. Our ability to work a computer mouse can affect our time, or maybe our level of attention to images and sounds. Even 
our different senses affect our reaction time. This activity made me wonder, do the reaction time in response to different stimuli differ from one sense to another? Let's all search for an answer to this question. You may use EQP digital resources or any other sources to learn more about our body's responses to different stimuli through the different senses and their reaction time. Senses reaction to different stimuli is our main focus next time. سرعة استجابة رد فعل الحواس هتكون هي محط لاهتمامنا المرة الجاية. As for today, we learned about how the body responds to different stimuli. واتفقنا ان كلمة stimuli معناها محفزات. We also learned about how the sensory receptors, the nervous system including the nerves, nerves, the brain and the spinal cord in integration with different body parts work together to respond properly to the different stimuli. ما تنسوش ان احنا ركزنا جدا على ان البرين is the one organ that process information. Prepare your books, sets and tools and get ready for practicing your investigation skills. An exciting investigation about reaction time is coming your way next time. Thank you scientists for this wonderful lesson and see you next time.